Welcome back to part 2 of our clinical software training. As you can remember from part 1, we've clicked on a button, letter. We're creating a letter. After we do that, after we click on the button, on, on the button new letter, the template window appears and offers all sorts of templates. All sorts of templates. You can see there are plenty of templates templates there. Lots of templates. Referrals, templates, let's um, click on one of them. Let's say osteoporosis care plan. Don't worry about uh, what kind of document It will ask you to whom you'd like to address this. Just any person. Medinet has just created a letter. You can print it, you can save it, and you can edit it. We've just created a letter. Documents. Documents tab allow you to import documents that is addressed to you from the outside world. It can be letter from the specialist, it can be anything. Now this document, it's empty of course, it sits in patient's file. You can move it, you can export it, or you can Delete it. Old prescriptions. There will be old prescriptions, prescriptions that have expired already. And now a new section. You can add immunization. It will ask you who is the vaccinator. Today it's me, Dr. Severo. Who provided consent? What if you're vaccinating a child? It would be guardian or an adult. What kind of vaccine you administered? And you can see the vaccines. All vaccines approved in Australia are listed here. The site where where vaccines has been administered. Batch number I will not make that edit. And then save. There we go. We've got vaccination status update. Now, allow me to get you to this menu. This sign, plus, means that we'd like to add something. You see, we are in the immunization tab. You press plus, the immunization, new immunization tab will appear. What if you are in past history tab? You press plus, 
past history tab appears. What if you are in prescription tab? You press on plus, prescribing tab appears. This button is to delete. Let's say we'd like to delete a past history item because it's a duplicate. Delete it. This button we have already used it today is for prescribing. All clinical software in Australia, all different clinical software, is designed the way that you can get to the same point by pressing two or three different buttons. This is done mainly for convenience, because all people are different, and some person finds it convenient to use this button, and another person finds it convenient to use another button. So you can reach the same point by using different buttons buttons. This is a letter writer button. We've been through that. Does it look like blood pressure device? Yes, it is blood pressure. That's where you enter blood pressure. Pulse. Is pulse regular, irregular, or irregularly irregular? Was it sitting pulse? What happened when patient stood up? I guess we're having not not very healthy patient. And you can save it. Or save and close. When you save it, the record of blood pressure is stored that you can always see progression of your patient. Let's close this. Go to progress note. Remember progress notes? You can see in examination blood pressure was entered automatically. Okay, let's go back to blood pressure. Blood pressure. That's where you enter. Next tab is respiratory function calculator. You can use peak flow meter or spirometer to register patient's lung function. But again, something is missing here. machine will not be able to calculate lung function or predict values of lung function for this patient because gender is missing and height is missing. Let's correct it quickly. Remember, any, anything we want to correct in demographics can be corrected to these fields. All we need is double click on on the field we'd like to correct. Let's get let's get back to respiratory calculator. Hmm. Now we've got gender, we've got age, but we do not have height. It's very easy to fix. There is a tab. We can enter patient's weight and height. Weight and height in patient's file are in centimeters and kilograms. Let me get you back to respiratory calculator. Now we've got gender, age, and height. Look, a new window appeared. That window has predicted values. 
that's what machine says patient should have and that's where we enter what patient has produced using spirometry machine let's enter some values machine shows us percentage of what is expected so that is predicted values and that's what patient produced this line is used to record patient's lung function after administration of bronchodilator ventolin, asmol or iramir This is the percentage of change. Change achieved by administration of bronchodilator. Again, we can save or save and close. And all the information that we've collected is registered here. Let's go back to respiratory tab. All the information collected is registered here as well. So over the period of time, you can see progression of the patient. Next tab. Weight. Weight and height. Remember, we've been here today. We can jump from one tab to another without closing the window. How convenient is it? Our patient is a male patient, so gestation calculator does not work. What if I change the gender? So we can try the station cal calculator. I'm afraid I will have to close the file for that. We'll get back to that in a minute. Mental state examination. This is mini mental state examination where you can enter relevant scores. And calculate final result. Again, what you've done today is recorded in your progress notes. When you get back, it's a mini mental state examination. The previous result will be stored here. And you can produce another examination. Renal function calculator. That's where you can enter serum creatinine ratio and calculate GFR according to patient's gender, age, and height. Safe and close. See you in part 3.